In my 30s, as a student of Indian music, I went to India for the first time. I traveled around the country like a local. One of the trips I took in 1989 by train and bus brought me to the lakes and canals of Kerala on the south coast along the Arabian Sea. It's a 900 kilometer stretch of lakes, canals, and rivers that serves as the source of life. India's naval college is here and grand buildings dot the waterways. But for most people, the waters are their backyards and sustenance, a way of transportation and the source of commerce. Coconuts, fish, and rice are all vital parts of the local industry. This wasn't a tourist attraction back then, just a place people lived. The network of backpackers would tell each other about it. I heard about the place and wanted to see it for myself. Thirty-five years later, back in India, I was traveling with my wife, Adrian. Some of the old rice barges have been remade to luxury houseboats. Traveling with my wife, we had to plan our locations to hear as much music as possible. But I'm lucky to be able to support some of the businesses that have grown up over the years. India has grown into a nation where people within the country travel to different districts. Middle-class Indians can now experience the richness of their own vast country, where in the past they were rarely able to travel. This particular cruise took us to the southern section of the waterways. Vimanad Coal Wetlands, the largest brackish tropical wetland ecosystem in Kerala state, on the southwest coast of India, is fed by 10 rivers and is the longest lake in the country. Very different from my days of backpacking. It's a relaxing voyage where the meals were of the local South Indian cuisine. What's the name? What's the name? English name. Pelsport. Yes. Kerala rice. What is this? It's a lady's finger. Lady's finger. Yeah. It's on Kerala traditional beer. It's on cabbage, toilet, sambar. Some of the large canals we traveled back up against the rice paddies. They were unchanged in the many years, and the ways of growing rice has been unchanged for hundreds of years. People process oysters and oyster shells and fix up the levees.
This photo of a pushed rice barge from 1989 compares with the improvements that have taken place. And electricity is much more common. As the sun begins to set on our first day, we moor in for the night. Today, we can sleep in luxury on the boat on the water. Sunrise brought a visitor, a hooded crow, looking for snacks. Fishermen were up at dawn. We set out again touring Vimba Nagol and eventually heading up to the north part of the lake. Some men were dredging up mud for building materials from the shallow lake bottom. I saw an underwater forest as we traveled. I don't know what sort of plants they were, but to my untrained eyes, they were very beautiful and ethereal. Enchanting in a way I'd never seen before. Our journey up the lake ended at Coconut Lagoon Hotel, which catered to Indian as well as foreign tourists. In the reception area, we were greeted by staff and a flute player who played Hansa Dwani, a South Indian rock I've studied. The hotel was designed using Carolyn architecture building styles.
Oh, you know Built on the lake, the hotel has its own water taxi. And a tea lady comes to serve local chai. The hotel, like many places on the lake, has nature preserves to support the local wildlife. I came to India originally drawn by the old, slow ways of Indian classical music. With evolving tastes, the music now has to compete with modern Bollywood and pop music. It even has to compete with changes in Indian classical as the genre grows and changes. But the original music is still to be heard. The old music still has its place in players, but it also evolves and grows. Throughout this video, we've been listening to the music of T.R. Mahalingam, a genius who also changed the way Indian Carnatic flute is played. The old canal life is there, but it isn't necessarily found on a houseboat. Just like any country, there is tourism and there is the real life of the people. Both are there and he should try to see daily life, as well as the cultivated beauty of the growing tourist industry. It all goes together to make the experience of a changing India more lovely and vibrant. The old slows you down, the new speeds you up. You need the old and the new in your life. Travel with purpose.